My name is Ted Smith. I'm the chair of the Electronics Take Back Coalition. Um, I am also the founder of Silicon Valley Toxics Coalition, former executive director there, which was formed 25 years ago to address the issues of health environment and the development of the electronics industry. I want to run through several slides very quickly. The problem, I think, is multifaceted, as you've heard. The, the products don't last very long. The equipment is toxic. More e-waste is thrown away than it is recycled. More recyclers simply export their products to developing countries. And the toxic components result from poor design make e-waste hard to recycle. The shrinking lifespans is one of the serious issues that we face. New technology drives consumers to buy new products at astonishing rates. Prediction is 32 million new television sets will be sold this year, uh, and 22 million new computers will be sold. Uh, and the February 17, 2009 digital conversion deadline is rapidly approaching. We predict that this is going to mean millions more televisions will be coming into our waste stream over the next few years. You've heard that e-waste is toxic, lead, mercury, cadmium, brominated flame retardants. Uh, our landfills are beginning to fill up. It's still a small percentage of our landfill waste, but it's the fastest growing, as you've heard. And uh, of, of all the uh, equipment that's currently being collected, we, we predict that something like 87.5% is currently being trashed and only 12.5% is being recycled. And this is the key. Of the products that are being recycled or collected for recycling right now, we estimate that 50 to 80% are being exported for processing in developing countries. And what this looks like is a, some of the most primitive processing you can imagine. There's video of this that I highly recommend if people have time to look at it. But what we know is that the products are being taken apart with hammers and that they're being burned. They burn the plastics in order to get to the metals which have value. And when they burn the plastics, it's creating dioxin clouds which are affecting the children and the communities uh, throughout the developing world. This is happening in China. It's happening in Asia. It's happening in, in Africa. This is one of the biggest problems that we're facing right now. And I think the U.S. is primarily responsible for this. So what can Congress do? We do support strong producer responsibility. We've been working with state legislatures around the country. There's now almost a dozen states that have passed laws. Most of them are producer responsibility. We do think that we need to close the door on exporting the hazardous e-waste to poor countries. And we do need to promote a comprehensive green design initiative. Um, producer responsibility means electronic manufacturers should bear the responsibility throughout the product life cycle. This is a, a, a design uh, initiative that started in Europe, which is now spread around the world, and we're working actively to bring into the U.S. We think that the legislation needs to include strong goals and timetables that drive increase in recycling, and we support federal legislation, but only if it's strong legislation and not lower than what's already happening in the states. And certainly we don't want to see a situation where the federal government would pass legislation, preempt the states, and have a lower standard than what's already happening out there. But primarily we think that the, the role of the federal government can focus on two things. It's preventing the export of the hazardous waste because the states cannot address that. Uh, we know that there are good processing options that do exist in, in the U.S. and other developed countries, and we think that we do need to ban the export of the toxic e-waste so that we can prevent the harm that we know is going on. But the other major initiative that I'd like to talk to today is what we think that the federal government can do to encourage green design and green engineering. E-waste would not be an issue if, it, if the products themselves were not so toxic. And industry's efforts to green their products are increasing, but we think still inadequate compared to the rapid pace of, of uh, the design changes. The manufacturers can design electronic products using green chemistry and green engineering principles uh, to make their products more durable, more upgradable, to be carbon neutral, fully recyclable, and f requiring fewer unsustainable materials. We think that a national sustainable electronics initiative is the way to go where we can combine uh, some of the best thinking in the country from within industry, within academia, within government agencies, public health and environmental organizations to develop the new strategies, not only to address the problems of, of electronic waste, but also to really try to solve these problems at the front end, which we do think is the, the place where we need to do it. And we think that the new initiative could be composed of a National Clean Electronics Council, which would be a governing body, again, a multi-stakeholder body as well as a National Clean Electronics Research and Development Fund funded by Congress. Um, with this, we think that the appropriate role could be to assess the current and future environmental and human health impacts, develop strategic plans to identify priority research needs, funding public and private research institutions, and to assure the diffusion and adoption of safer and cleaner technologies. Thank you very much.